after a passionate campaign that spanned two years of mounting intensity but reached back into centuries of history, Scottish voters headed for the polling booths on Thursday to choose whether to remain part of the United Kingdom or to secede and become an independent nation. If the Yes campaign seeking independence for Scotland secures a majority, the outcome will herald the most dramatic constitutional change in the relationship between the two countries since they united in 1707. The repercussions would be enormous, creating the world's newest state and ending a union that once oversaw an empire and triumphed in two world wars. If no voters prevail, the outcome will leave Britain's Prime Minister, David Cameron, facing challenges from his own Conservative Party over promises of greater autonomy for Scotland that he offered in an effort to head off the pro-independence campaign led by the Scottish First Minister, Alex Salmond, almost 4.3 million people. 97% of the electorate, have registered to vote, including 16- and 17-year-olds enfranchised for the first time. Analysts have forecast a record turnout in excess of 80% at about 2,600 polling places stretching from urban centers to remote and sparsely populated islands. Voting began at 7 a.m. local time, and the polling stations are set to close at 10 p.m. A steady stream of voters headed for polling stations here under murky skies. A full result is expected by breakfast time on Friday, when Scots will learn whether their land is to embark on a dramatic new chapter. The English, who form the overwhelming majority of the 60 million plus population of the United Kingdom, have no vote in the referendum, whose results could send political and economic shockwaves across the nation, which also includes Wales and Northern Ireland. As Scotland prepares for an historic yes or no vote for independence, even the most remote regions are ready to defend their opinions. Some residents of the Shetland Islands, a 12-hour ferry ride from the mainland, say a vote for independence would merely substitute the distant rulers in London for those in Edinburgh. Sonny Priest owns a brewery and says a yes vote will make already expensive trade even more costly. Plus, up here there's... There's not much in Shetland that's traditionally Scottish. There's no very little wearing of the kilt or anything like that. But in the capital, the Yes campaign continues to soldier on. A vow by Britain's Labour Party to give Scotland more power if they vote to stay together is not all that convincing for separatists. You know, the choice we've got on Thursday is simple. We vote yes and we decide the powers we have in Scotland. Voting on the independence referendum starts Thursday. Opinion surveys before the vote left the result on a knife's edge, too close to call. Despite the intensity of the debate, some key issues remain unresolved, such as the currency to be used by an independent Scotland if there is a yes vote. Equally, Scottish secession could raise profound questions over Mr Cameron's political future. Mr Salmond, Scotland's highest ranking official, has indicated that he will not step down if his side loses the referendum. One big issue if the Yes campaign wins is the future of British nuclear submarines based in Scotland, which Mr Salmon's Scottish National Party wants to evict. Westminster hopes it'll sway the undecided, a pledge to give Scotland more powers should they vote no to independence. The promise comes from the leaders of Britain's three main political parties, brought together by former Labour Prime Minister Gordon Brown in a last-ditch attempt to keep the UK together. The real way to change is not to separate off Scotland from the rest of the United Kingdom, but to have a stronger Scottish Parliament with the powers that we want it to have on a timetable that is quick and will deliver swiftly to the people of Scotland. Keen to show their mettle, the Yes campaign are refusing to take the bait. Deputy First Minister Nicola Sturgeon insisting independence is the only way to guarantee more powers. It's meaningless. You know, they're saying we'll deliver more powers if you vote no, but they won't tell us what more powers they're talking about. They don't agree between themselves what more powers should come to Scotland. And we're already seeing MPs from south of the border saying that they'll block any more powers. It's not just Westminster that's getting nervous. The OECD has warned a yes vote could hit the global recovery. The uncertainty over currency and taxation is also weighing in Germany, where the UK is a key export market. Together with Ukraine, it sent investor confidence to its lowest level since December 2012. IG's Alistair McCaig. Certainly Friday morning could see markets uh, pretty aggressively moving around 
uh, certainly as far as sterling US dollar is concerned and the generic strength of the pound is concerned, uh, we've seen it being weighed down with uh, fears of a breakup of the union. Uh, and I think uh, if uh, Scotland were to vote yes, I think we would likely see another uh, pretty aggressive leg down. With just two days to go, polls suggest the vote is too close to call. Whatever the outcome, though, it seems Britain, as we know it, will be no more.